Time for book reviews! Hello everyone and welcome to Fortmaster's blog for the Warhammer 40,000 gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to my 236th book review of this vlog. Today I'm reviewing the short stories called Storm Hex written by E.J. Davis and Storm Seeker written by Alex Worley. They were both released as a part of the On Wings of Blood Aeronautica Imperialis anthology. Since I've already talked about the, the, the description for this anthology, I will not repeat it here myself again. We can begin with a short story called Sturmhex. On its front cover, we see a tech marine of the Grey Knights in the middle of a battle. Everything looks oversized and out of proportion, so it's far from my favorite front cover. I will give this front cover a 4 to 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. This takes place on Sturmhex Prime. Grand Master Ward and Kai's First Brotherhood are out on a mission to the dead planet's atmosphere, but as they are joined by Chaos Raptors, it proves the planet still contain life after all. They have found that the spoiler has set his eyes on this world and will summon a demon to his biding. They are there to stop it. Rare indeed are the times when an entire brotherhood of Grey Knights fights together, but now the entire First Brotherhood gathers for a headlong assault against a growing demonic threat on Sturmhex. Eager and his fellow Tech Marines pilot the Storm Ravens that will drop their brothers into the midst of battle. But when the tides of war changes and the Demon Prince Anak here's plans is revealed, they must adapt to survive and bring an end to the terror of Sturmhex. This takes place on Sturmhex Prime. Grandmaster Vardan Kai's First Brotherhood is out on a mission to the dead planet's atmosphere, but as they are joined by Chaos Raptors, it proves the planet still contains life after all. They have found out that the spoilers have set his eyes on this world and will summon a demon to his bidding. They are there to stop it. Our main character is Tech Marine Aegir. It then switches over to Captain Roga, the first captain of the Lords of Decay, a Nurgle warband that split off from Death Guard Legion. They have been performing a ritual to summon the Demon Prince of Nurgle by the name of Anakir to conquer for his own end. Roga questions this as they made a promise to Abaddon but is assured they will conquer and if they are halted their, their conquest is worthless to Abaddon no matter what. He is majorly pissed off for being banished for a millennia. The initial attacks of the Grey Knights lie on their advantage but their captain rules out that there must be a bigger demon to summon so many lesser demons, while storm ravens circulate about to provide firepower. This all changed when Anakir releases the Hell Drakes and starts wrecking their fire support. He is searching for someone special, the one who banished him, but Vardan Kai is not that certain person. Just as he is about to enact the banishment, it seems that he is given the wrong name. The demon then teases that Nicodemus might have given him falsehood. We find out later this individual is in fact Inquisitor Nicodemus Quixos. This all comes crashing down when Aegir distracts the demon and Wardan Kai captured him in an object named the Tesseract Labyrinth. Aegir and his squad leader Iocaste are the only few who knew about this. Afterwards, Kai brings the, over the captured demon to Quixos but he argues the demon should be purged and not captured and hopes this is for the best of things. In an extract of a journal at the end of the story, it is revealed that the, the Inquisitor turned traitor and was to be hunted down. If he was that this time and sacrificed Grey Knights willingly is uncertain. So what did I think about this short story? Well, before dwelling into my opinions, I would have to say that after doing some research, one of the characters that appear in this story is Quixos, and he, I think he might be the same character that appeared in a second Eisenhorn novel named Maleus. And the Tesseract Labyrinths are an item that was gifted to the Grey Knights of the Necrons that they have been using to capture demons, mostly lesser ones but occasionally great ones as well. And another thing that was really cool was the, the appearance of Vardan Kai, which is a character that I've seen a lot of in the Chaos Gate 
Demon Hunter's game. So it's uh, it's really cool to see him uh, actually be a character existing inside the fiction outside of that game. That he is the first Grandmaster of the chapter. So I've said many times before that I'm not the biggest fan of the Grey Knights. Uh, as a fraction they are quite boring but they are often involved with cool things which justifies their existence. I have previously reviewed the Mortarion's Heart, also a Grey Knight's story of them versus Mortarion, Death Guard and Nurgle's most worth of demons. And I will actually make a re-release of that other drama in this month just to celebrate the fact that I'm going back to Grey Knights here once again. So we'll see it later on here on my channel. Uh, I find it very interesting that it's just Nurgle in particular that are drawn towards them constantly. But I did enjoy this short story, uh, and as an aeronautic and imperialist short story, it wasn't really heavy on the flying, but it's present there, of course. So if you already have this anthology where you have all, all the other shorts which I have recommended that you read, then you should definitely should check out this one as well. I'll give this short story a 7 out of 10 forks. So we can end this with Stormseeker by Alex Worley. On the front cover we see two Stormwolf gunships and I must admit I think these are amongst the ugliest models I've seen from Games Workshop in recent years. If I would tell you guys that they look like uh, decapitated Pluto heads, you cannot unsee that ever. But taking that aside, I think this front cover looks simple but decent. Old school art style like it's taken from a codex. I've given this front cover a 6 out of 10 forks, let's see what this story is all about. Iron Priest Anvar Rustmaid and his brothers in the Death Wolves are hunting. Their prey are two degenerate Dark Eldar pirates whom they have brought to heal on the Death World of Viteris. The pilot of a Stormwolf gunship, Anvar takes to the skies as his brothers wage war below. He is a storm seeker and would die before allowing his quarry to escape but the Xenos are cunning and have gunships of their own. So our main character is Iron Priest Anvar Rustmin, a member of the Death Wolves, which in turn are one of the 12 active great companies of the Space Wolves. They are stationed on the Death World of Viteris and are out on the hunt for Dark Eldar pirates. They are about to depart their strike cruiser when Rustmin is worried he lacks proper tribute to their ship. Their initial attack on the Dark Eldars goes smoothly, we find out from the perspective of the alien that Archon Arifur Sinaris, Cabal of the Forked Tongue, was stranded on his planet when agents of his rival Cabal, the Book of Sorrows, destroyed the portals upon arrival. But they suffer several casualties against the Archon as his sister Isabella joins the fight. Now the air support must take on this new threat of razor wings while they have to deploy more troops on the ground they currently cannot. They are also shortly visited by bombers which they have to deal with, but in the process Rustmin loses his last wingman. But he manages to gun down the siblings and later on kill them. He collects his brothers after the fight and returns back to the strike cruiser. So what do you think about this short story? Well I enjoyed this short story mostly because we got to see from both perspectives, both the Space Wolves and the Dark Eldar, and it seemed like an even fight between them. I enjoyed the characters and for being Space Wolves they are obnoxiously all over the place. Also after having read several short stories where the main characters don't survive, it was certainly a good change of pace when it comes from this uh, anthology. And now, now you might be wondering why am I reviewing a Space Wolf story in the middle of all of these Grey Knight stories? Well. There is a novel which involves uh, focuses on the Grey Knights that also involves the Space Wolves, which I will return to in the in the day following this. So stay put for that. So there's a small tease there. Anyway, so I will give this uh, short story a seven out of ten works, and with that I will conclude this book review. Thank you very much for watching this book review. See you around, everybody. Bye bye.